So if you are after some unfrilly but really beautiful stunning baby names then the slow living aesthetic is giving so much of that vibe. It is all over TikTok, it's all over the internet. Slow living is basically like the idea of breaking up with technology, a back to basics living where you really value simple as a luxury. So you can see where I've gone with the baby names. This is the baby name version of a painted sourdough, not a unicorn birthday cake, or like a wood fired hot tub of baby names. Gorgeous, timeless, luxury. I'm here for it. I've got girl boy names, so listen along. <laughs> single Monday here on YouTube I make a new baby name list for ideas and inspiration because I know how difficult it is to name a baby and I also believe that A to Z books are no help whatsoever if you want to find a name you love it's all about tuning into what your style is through an aesthetic or a theme that you really really like so listen along because this list is so gorgeous and I think it would tick so many of your boxes they're really timeless names but I have included some of my wild cards <laughs> as well for girls the name Winifred is just so perfect for this trend because it is vintage but it is slightly coming back it's at number 513 in the chart it's a medieval name so it's got that sort of oldie worldy feel to it but with Winnie being so popular and this idea of kind of almost gender neutral names with the Fred at the end it's so perfect and would really really suit a modern little girl it's a Welsh martyr but the name actually means joy and peace and can also mean reconciliation so a really beautiful name for maybe a rainbow baby or a much wanted baby I love Winifred so much I think it's absolutely beautiful I love the length of it I love the fact that it's got these nickname options Freddy for a little girl is beautiful I have Freddy as a boy um, but I love it for a girl as well so now ranked at number 200 the highest it's ever been but still quite low down the charts in the UK is the name Hattie I love it it is a short form of Harriet and it's the same name as like a Henry or a Harry so if you're honoring somebody in your family with those names and you could go with Hattie I like Hattie by itself I love Harriet's but I love the idea of this nickname as first name vintage style which are all over the top of the charts and finding Hattie which is a real variation of it lower down of the trends you're joining a popular trend but in your own unique way I just think that the meaning of home is so perfect for this slow living simplicity trend and it's got that sort of vintageness with it with little hats Hattie. <laughs> Only at number 70, but a beautiful name that everyone knows is the name Iris. So it is um, Kate Winslet's character name in The Holiday, which is so her cottage is the ultimate kind of slow living, get off grid, relax for a while, get into the countryside, get your brother around, who's not your brother in my ideas. <laughs> um, but I love the name Iris so much with the, for the flower meaning of it. It's also a part of your eye, which puts me off because I've got an eye phobia. I think I'm the only one in the world. Um, but it's really gorgeous. And it also is a goddess name. So Iris is the goddess of the rainbow so so many beautiful things going for the name iris and it's very old-fashioned but with ivy being the fifth most popular name in the uk at the moment and even with isla being so high up i feel like iris is where it's at in terms of finding a really rare gem that suits this more kind of paired back subtle but uber luxurious because it's so beautiful name with so much meaning and another name that i'm always surprised is so low down is the name ingrid what do you think of it? So I really liked Ingrid when we were having my daughter. She's called Evelina, but I loved Ingrid so much because to me it is so beautiful. It's only at number 734 in the UK as well, so much further down. I think because of that G, maybe it sounds a bit more rustic, which is what this list is really, really all about. So Ing is the god of fertility and Ingrid is the female counterpart so it's a goddess name so the goddess of fertility and Ingrid also means to be loved or beautiful so yeah, who wouldn't want to be called Ingrid I just think it's very poetic very very beautiful and again a really rare find from lower down if you like the sound of it what do you think why do you think let me know in the description box Ingrid is so low down do you think it's divisive would anyone find it not so cute with a G? Let me know. Super rare gem again from the bottom of the charts is the name Tess 
for girls. I absolutely love it. It's short, simple, one syllable names, which are really, really popular at the moment. And it means to harvest or to reap. So that real feeling of outdoors living again and the back to basics and bringing the food in and making your own food, making your own bread. You've got to be called Tess. I think it's really lovely in its simplicity compared to say Winifred, but Winifred and Tess, wouldn't these be just beautiful sister names? It's like literally out of um, a prairie <laughs> or a meadow somewhere. But I think it's so lovely and it's so laid down. It's only at number 1,628 in the UK. So she wouldn't be sharing her name with anybody, which surprises me so much because it's such a lovely name. She can be Tessie if you wanted a nickname when she's little, but it really works. I knew an older Tess and I know a little girl Tess, so maybe I know two of the Tesses in the UK. And I think it's really gorge. The name Evangeline is lovely. I've just said my daughter called Evelyn and it's very similar but it means bringer of good news and evangelical which is to be really you know to sing in praise and to sing worship really um, and have this joy to it and I just think Evangeline is so gorgeous. Eva as a nickname is lovely but going that longer form just gives it a much more timeless luxury to it. It's not overly fussy either because it's not too frilly but lovely. It's a hidden Disney name that is Evangeline in do you know? Um, Princess and the Frog, the star is called Evangeline, which I love. It's in a lot of writing. There's a lot of heroines called Evangeline in older books. So it's really lovely. Uncle Tom's Cabin has an Evangeline. And I think with Eva being so popular, it's a lovely one to use. Evelina often gets called Evangeline and I'm not mad about it. I always quite like it. The name Annie is a real crush of mine at the moment. It's at number 112 in the chart. So outside the top 100, it actually peaked at 115 a few years ago, but it's sort of holding steady around that side. And I just think it's gonna have a little comeback because it's so optimistic and sunny. Obviously the movie Annie, which has been redone for a new generation, it just makes you smile a lot, Annie. And the name Anne just by itself, I love as well. And it's so low down. There's actually more babies registered the name baby than there are Anne. Um, it maybe is sort of a, because it was kind of quite a popular name back in the sort of 50s, so it's maybe more of like a mum, grandma type of name rather than it hasn't had its huge resurgence yet, which maybe it will in another generation when this sort of gets to the older grandma, great granny, that's where we kind of go for our sort of Winifred um, type of name to honour. But I love Annie. I think it would just be such a classic choice, but unexpected and really, really beautiful and perfect for this sort of slow living aesthetic. And yes, I am thinking of Delilah, the Webski's life, <laughs> when I'm doing this list. The name I mentioned a while ago, which I'm just so into and I think it's going to come back because of the popularity of Sorrow and Bliss the book which yes I'm as obsessed with as everyone else is the name Winsome so the aunt was called Winsome and I just absolutely love it and it means to be agreeable or light-hearted and we love again like if Winifred feels too not sure on the Fred bit Winsome it's just so whimsy she could be whimsy as a nickname it's just so joyful to me i think it really sounds like it so there is that thing if you win some you lose them <laughs> which i imagine you'd get all the time but winsome it's just so unusual so different and totally off radar but i love it and i think with the popularity of the book i've started to see it on a few more name lists people talking about this name a little bit more another name that's kind of gone by the wayside lately that i love is the name gwyneth and I think because of Gwyneth Paltrow, it's sort of such a celebrity name. But when you actually just take the name away from the association of Gwyneth Paltrow, Gwyneth, it's lovely, very humble, very down to earth, very, very earthy and perfect with this kind of slow living aesthetic that I've got in my mind's eye, Gwyneth. So it means happiness. And obviously then you've got Gwen. I've always loved the name Gwen. And my sister doesn't like the name Gwen. We talked about it on the podcast, which we do together about baby names. <laughs> um, and I was like, really love it. Um, I've always thought it was so beautiful sounding Gwen anything with that W in sounds really really soft and gentle and I think Gwyneth would be a beautiful choice because everyone can say it and she's only one person called Gwyneth but yet the name's kind of gone out of style what do you think of it there were only 15 babies named Gwyneth this year 15 so you'd have such a rare gem I also really started crushing on after Annie the name Jilly spelled with a G so like for Jillian but short Jilly and I just thought it sounds lovely it sounds so vintage throwback but very very classic and again if Millie and all of those ones are so high up and Evie then a uh, Jilly is a little bit unique and different it means eternal happiness and it's a biblical name as well so what do you think of it would you like it with a J or with a G like this then she'd be Gigi because Gigi is really popular but so not this aesthetic whereas Jilly just seems to be much more laid back and softer and kind of vintage vibes and I just love it and what about the name Tabitha 
So I love the name Tabitha. It actually sounds quite modern, but it's a rare Hebrew name. So it was Tabitha in the Bible who was known for her kindness and for going, doing good deeds. I can't talk today. <laughs> um, and I just always loved the name. I think that there's, with Delilah being so popular on the right, I think Tabitha is a really good alternative to it if you're liking that style. It actually means gazelle as well. So it's got that really beautiful nature deer feeling to it, that outdoorsy wilderness vibe. Tabitha, I nearly said Giselle is the name. <laughs> Tabitha, I think it's left. So my wild cards for girls. First one was from a comment somebody left on one of my other videos and I loved it so much. She said she's a teacher and has a little girl named Gatsby in her class and that she absolutely loved it. And I was like, I absolutely love the idea of the name Gatsby for a little girl. And for some reason, even though it's like a 1920s, cause obviously you think of the great Gatsby straight away. Gatsby was a surname, it's not a registered first name, I know. But for some reason it really, suited this vibe as well this sort of slow living aesthetic Gatsby just sounded like that maybe because he's a bit of a hermit he lives out in the middle of nowhere Gatsby um it just sounds maybe because it's so literary I just absolutely loved it and wanted to share it with you what do you think of Gatsby for a girl I prefer it for a girl than I do for a boy um and I just loved it so I wanted to share it with you all and another rare Hebrew name is the name Zipporah so she was the wife of Moses in the Bible. This name is nowhere, it's very, very low down, and it means bird, lots going for it. Sephora is more popular, but Zipporah was the original Hebrew version. I think with the Z, it's really, really wearable, a much more daring choice, but again, we're liking longer names. We like Aurora. Zipporah is not all that different. It's a bit more difficult to spell and to say, so you might end up explaining it a little bit more often. But what do you think of it? I think it's totally, totally wearable. Okay, I've got three more wild cards for girls. And what I'm gonna do is do the boy version next week because I've been talking for so long about the girl versions. So the next wild card is the name Monet. <laughs> so with Bronte, meaning thunder, we got quite into it and Monet is lovely. Obviously it's the painter that you go immediately to and all those sort of nature still lives, which are absolutely gorgeous. And the name actually means to be heard. So it's actually a variation of the name Simon from looking back in name history, which is interesting. So if we're honoring a Simon, you go, I've named her after you, Monet. <laughs> like, what? Um, but I love the idea of it meaning to be heard. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. There were actually six girls named Monet last year so it is out there being used M names are super popular at the moment so could you bounce onto Monet do you agree with me that it fits this aesthetic it is more complicated these ones so that's why they're wild cards because they're not perfect would you put a Winifred on the same list as a Monet but you can because if you're living that kind of lifestyle and you're really into that sort of literary poetic artistic side of the slow living aesthetic and being very crafty and getting back to using your hands and creating then Monet it works perfectly guys <laughs> Okay, this one's maybe better. So the girl name, Miller. So this is so perfect for this list. It means to mill, to grind grain, to make bread. So perfect slow living aesthetic. There were 83 boys named Miller last year, but only three girls. But I love it for both actually, but I absolutely love it for girls. I think it works so perfectly. I love these sort of um, occupational names like Piper, Harper, all of those are music occupational names. Miller is a really great one that really works as a first name as well. Instead of a Millie, go with a Miller. Like be a little bit more complete and a little bit more daring and you might find that you absolutely love the name and it stands out a little more. And my last wild card for girls is a name that I personally love and it's the name Tansy. I just can't believe it's so low down the charts as well. There were only five girls named Tansy last year and I think it really, really works. So it is a character in Heart of Dixie, which I've never seen. So maybe it's got a more sort of um, bolder type of feel to it. Whereas a Tansy was actually a plant used for a lot of medicinal purposes. So it's got that beautiful kind of plant feed medicine vibe going for it, which I'm really into. Uh, but who else is drinking mushrooms at the moment? Um, but I just love it so much, Tansy. To me, it sounds very unusual and unique but sounds very pretty but with the T it's kind of stronger it's a bit more paired back it's a little bit less like a pansy um, or a rosy tansy is a little bit more 
nature and grounded to me and I love that for it. So I love the meaning immortal as well, it's beautiful. So those are my girl versions of this. So boy list is lush. I'm going to split them in two because I've been talking for nearly 20 minutes already about the girl name. So do hit subscribe to hear the boy list which will be next week. I've got a couple of boy lists coming up. Also the top 23 boy names for 2023 is coming up on my channel. So don't miss any of them. Hit subscribe. You can hit the little bell sign as well. And if you're into names and you like to solve name dilemmas from real people then you can listen to the podcast it's called baby name envy there's no new episodes planned sadly we might have a special coming out my sister is my co-host and she's very very poorly at the moment so um we're not recording but we love seeing that it's still being downloaded and listened to it brings us a lot of joy so go ahead and listen to the episodes i'll link that below as well bye guys <laughs>